Hey, everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Widener Show, powered by SoundCloud Studios. Visit online at soundcloudstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. SoundCloud Studios is the answer. SoundCloud Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at soundcloudstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author, Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia. Available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Z has garnered great reviews and Eve Eleven endorsed by Howard Celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forbes Riley, and many else. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia Molson Z, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show on over 30 podcast platforms and themikewidenershow.com, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple Music. And more as well, take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, all kinds of great gifts. 24-7, 365 for your family, friends, and loved ones. Also, check out the Me and Molson Zia store on Amazon for great merchandise. T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, phone cases, a lot more, and great gifts for your loved ones. Also, check out Missing, Once, and Wrinkles, Amazon.com, slash Me and Molson Zia. And also, don't forget to support us on Anchor FM, along with PayPal and the MikeWidenerShow.com. Make sure you donate generously today. We're here with a terrific lady who's a highly regarded writer, actress, and director, as well as filmmaker. And her husband, Matt Four, formed at Porn Behavior Productions. And we're going to find out <laughs> when you know, the meaning behind the name. But don't let that fool you. They've produced dozens of award-winning short films, web series, music videos, and more as well to feature films they've been doing since 2017. And um, the latest movie uh, features... Um, a number of amazing um, actors like Anthony Goes, Maya Reeve, Jack Herhol, and more. And this is about a story that's taking place as well, too. And they've also done Happy Birthday, Ray, Hemorrhage, Key Question. And we're going to talk about the latest movie that's out right now and says 10 times fast. Okay, if you say it 10 times fast, I'm sure we'll give you a little something. It's Boreala Boreal. So say it 10 times fast before we proceed. <laughs> Live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studios in beautiful downtown Los Angeles, the amazing multi-talented writer, actress, director, and filmmaker of Boreala Borealis. <laughs> I'll, I'll say it fast later, Catherine East. <laughs> Catherine, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Mike. I'm just delighted. <laughs> well, we're delighted to have you on as well, too. And uh, checking out what you got, you're highly regarded. You're writer, actress, also director and filmmaker, and you formed a horror behavior with um, your husband, Matt Four. And um, don't let that fool you, guys. They produce dozens of award-winning films, music videos and shorts, web series and everything. We'll talk about those. And um, the latest uh, Boreala Borealis is out right now. And, if, and they just wrapped up another project. Also, also talk about Happy Birthday, Ray, Hemorrhage, Key Question, and a lot more, <laughs> and uh, all the great works. And before getting to all that, Catherine, tell us how you got started. My goodness. Well, I think I got started because of The Little Mermaid. Uh, <laughs> did you say boreal boreals too many times before uh getting caught by that big fish or that big bad king or something exactly. i didn't know what that was back then but yeah i think that's where it started for me is singing and disney movies and stuff and then it sort of took off from there i ended up um going to musical theater school and uh going to acting school in new york city and studied with a lot of really wonderful people and uh, that eventually took me out to los angeles um because my real passion at the end of the day was was filmmaking and i just wanted to be in the land where where that all happened mm -hmm. that's so amazing and what was that one precise moment that simply influenced you into what you're doing for the rest of your life mm. oh probably the goonies the goonies. goonies oh my the gosh. goonies yeah yeah <laughs> can they say boy uh, boy uh, 10 times fast it's like i bet they could <laughs> yeah it's, it's like get, give them water and allow them to go to the refrigerator at midnight then they'll be santa and then they get tongue twisted and go <laughs> Yeah. Yep, exactly. <laughs> and it's like, I, it's Borrelia. So like, it's like, if you think of like Aure Aurelia, Aure Aurora, okay, Aurora Borealis, 
uh, Aurelia, Princess Aurelia, right? That's a Disney thing. So it's mm-hmm. Borrelia. So that, it's, it's a little easier. So that's how it sounds like a flower to me. Borrelia. It just sounds so pretty. <laughs> but oh. the Goonies is exactly where it started for me. I, that's when I was like, oh, I want to make movies. I want to do movies like, you know, I want to make I want to make movies like this. I love uh, filmmaking in general. And um, it just sort of started a love affair for me. So I became a cinephile. Huh, uh, in my teens, yeah. That's rather interesting. And uh, speaking of movies, besides um, The Little Mermaid and Goonies, what are you, some of your other favorite movies uh, growing Ooh, up? I really, really love um, uh, the, have you ever seen the movie Prisoners? Uh, it's by the director who just directed Dune, Denis uh, Villeneuve. Um, it's also um, Sicario. I love crime thrillers, which is hilarious because the first movie that I made was a love story. <laughs> <laughs> the second movie I made was a crime thriller. Um, but I love all movies. You know, I love Shakespeare in love. Um, I love, I do love Titanic also. Huge, huge Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio fan. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also really dig the old school stuff. I am a big, big fan of uh, the director, Alan Pakula, who directed Clute, um, and all the president's men. And I think oh, we wow. just have a lot to learn from, from those kind of movies cinematically. All the President's Men, I remember watching a movie even when I was young. It's like I picked up right away. I says, that was an amazing movie. It was that and also The Paper Chase. And I think those like (gasps) the first two serious movies I watched. I I was more into cartoons and um, everything else. Those (laughs) are the first two serious movies I watched was um, All the President's Men and uh, The Paper Chase. And that's what led me down the path of like just expanding. I mean, whoo, amazing. Exactly. And Stanley Kubrick, I'm really, you know, I love, I love The Shining. I love 2001. Um, You know, I just, I really actually like studying uh, filmmakers in general, people who like, and studying their whole body of work. Like right now I'm really into Mike Flanagan, Mm -hmm. uh, who directed Midnight Mass, which is on Netflix, which is sort of like a seven hour movie. It's It's a cinematic seven hour movie. I mean, it's technically a limited series, but that's what we're doing with TV now, right? With these little limited series where you can make a longer kind of movie, but it's technically a series. So mm-hmm. uh, almost like binge watching in a way too, you know, bit by bit, but then just string together. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. I just think it's really fascinating to see where people start and then where they end up. Um, especially as like they get more funding, you know, you, you make your, your first couple of independent films and you see Mike Flanagan's stuff and you're like, wow, it's so amazing to see what this guy did with no money. And then once he ended up getting money and funded by, you know, studios and Netflix and whatnot, you're just like, man, that's the dream, right? <laughs> and, and of course they're all like, I want to be like this guy. So yes, exactly. He huh. ex- exactly. I want to be like Mike Flanagan. <laughs> a very good role model. It's like, you don't have to have money. It's like, have the money come to you. It's like, I like that approach much, much better. hundred percent. The yes, next one, the money's coming to me, baby. <laughs> there you go. We'll, we'll see to it for sure. And uh, going back to Stanley oh, Kubrick, you. you talk about some of his movies. What are your thoughts on Clockwork Orange? Ooh, you know, when I watched it in my 20s, I didn't like it. I didn't understand it. I was in my early 20s and I was really just mortified by it. I was, I think it scared me and I was just the subject matter and I didn't understand a lot of the metaphor that was happening there. And then I actually rewatched it during the pandemic year. Uh, and I was floored by it, uh, just what they do with the cinematography and how they're able to visually tell that story. And the metaphors to me really, really came through. I'd never read the book, um, but I, I loved it the second time around. I just don't think I was mature enough to understand it mm-hmm. <laughs> when I watched it the first time. I, I, I think a lot of things like that, too. It's just like, you know, as youngsters, like you, you like to look at just for pictures. But then when you grow up, you start understanding more of the yeah. words. And then some films mm-hmm. as well, too. You, you watch like so many different times and you get like so many different meanings as uh, as time goes 100%. on. You know, a good a good example is the Truman Show. It's like you pick up, you pick up <gasps> one theme and then you watch it again. You get another theme, you watch again, you get another theme and you get a theme of a theme of a theme of a theme and then another theme of a theme of the theme of the theme. So it's like, you know, it's those type of movies, which I'm fascinated by. It's like you pick up something different every single time. Oh, my gosh. And look at how like the Truman Show has aged as well. That came out, I think, in 98 or 99, like right before crazy computer stuff, social media, like it's so fast and reality TV and the way that we all, cause we're all voyeurs now. We all, you know, we all go on social media and we look at other people's lives that we don't even know. And that's normal, but that's kind of weird. If you told someone that 20 years ago, that that's what life is going to be like now, 
Mm -hmm. That's weird. That's and, so weird. And, and of course, too, when I watched it the first time, you had that, uh, you had that, that front Fresno light, you know, drop, drop down. It's like, I thought, mm -hmm. hey, it must have been like an uh, alien second time, <laughs> a UFO, a third time. What's this camera like <laughs> doing here? And then a fourth time, it's like, you know, I guess somebody uh, dropped a part from Ford or something or from a plane, you know, kind of like a joke or something. Similar. Exactly. It's a feeling too. Like that's the thing about cinema is I think that there's, you, we can talk about all of the things that we love about it and specific things, but there's also this intangible thing where you just, it's like a feeling in your gut and your soul when you watch something that resonates with you and you can't even put it into words. It's when the music swells and a character realizes something or whatnot. And it's that, that feeling, I think that human feeling of like, Oh, like I'm not alone. Like someone else has felt this feeling before. Um, and that's what I, that's, I think the thing that I love the most about it is being able to create a space like that for people, hopefully when they watch my movies. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, well. and that's an amazing thing as well too. And, uh, also, besides some of the uh, directors we mentioned as well, too, who are your similar other favorite directors growing up? Oh, growing up. I mean, I, you know, I am, I'm just going to say it. Do you know Tamara Jenkins? Who I've directed heard, yes. Uh -huh. Slums of Beverly Hills. So um, uh, she was, I would say she was my, my I, I found her in my teens. Um because uh, up until Tamara Jenkins, I, I don't think I, I, I was probably 15 or 16 years old when I found her. I didn't realize women could be directors. Mm -hmm. How sad is that? Mm -hmm. I didn't get it. Uh, you know, of course, I love, you know, Steven Spielberg and all of the all of James Cameron and the classics like that. And as I mentioned, Alan Pakula and Stanley Kubrick. Um, but when you're a kid and you're watching the credits, you never see, a, you know, when I was a kid, I was born in the 80s. I never really saw a woman's name and as the director ever until Tamara Jenkins, until I saw Slums of Beverly Hills. And that sort of was a game changer for me. Um, mm -hmm. Sort of like, you, you know, a woman could be president, right? Of course. Exactly right. And we're getting, <laughs> we're getting close to be honest with you. We do have a female vice president. Our yes. president is pretty much a step or two away and it's getting to be happening too. So <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> mm -hmm. And of course, speaking of all the game changing directors and movies and everything, who are some of your favorite actors and actresses growing up? Oh my gosh. Well, I, Kate Winslet was like the be all end all for any, any girl that was over a size two, I think um, <laughs> she was just the most magical. Um, I absolutely was in love with her. And I really, um, as far as actors are concerned, I have a, I have like a really huge crush on Josh Brolin. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I would watch a lot of his movies <laughs> as well. Oh my gosh. Um, but it's oh, and Kate Blanchett, and I mean a lot of a lot of the, the 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 British actors, I have to say. And I did have Leonardo DiCaprio all over my walls wow. as a as a teen. It was just his face everywhere for magazines everywhere, <laughs> mm -hmm. and and a lot as well too. You got some amazing actors and actresses in your movies. You also got uh, Happy Birthday Ray, Hammeridge, and also Key Question. And we'll talk about uh, Bo Boreala Borealis. Did I get that right this time? <laughs> Borrelia. Bor Borrelia. Okay. All right. There I got. I got. I got. <laughs> I got to make a little note here. Sometimes the English language is a little deceptive. So it's we'll talk a about really hard word. <laughs> oh yeah, that's why it's a tongue twister. Borrelia borealis. We'll talk about it in just one minute. We encourage everybody to uh, practice it ten times fast before you put you to the test. But first, listen to the Mike Widener Show at the Mike Widener Show .com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at SonicWebStudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international war ring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson has garnered great reviews and even love and endorsed by Howard Slurries, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at the MikeWidenerShow.com and over 30 podcast platforms. 
Take us with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas for your loved ones, go to Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Widener Show podcast or the Mike Widener Show.com. And for more great gift ideas, T-shirts, pop sockets, phone cases, and more, go to Amazon.com slash me and Molson Zia. Check out the great merchandise. And it's great books like Missing, Once and Wrinkles, Amazon.com slash me and Molson DF. And don't forget to support us on Anchor FM, support us on PayPal, and also the Mike Widener Show.com. Make sure you donate generously today. We're here with the amazing, highly regarded, multi talented writer, actress, director, and filmmaker, Catherine Easton, here on the Mike Widener Show. Before we talk about your um, latest movie, Borrelia Borealis, um, and more as well, too, you and your husband formed a uh, abhorrent behavior production which you've won dozen of awards and um tell us how i got the how, how you come up with the name of <laughs> abhorrent, abhorrent, abhorrent behavior boy a, real, real i honest. know <laughs> i just i know how to pick the words don't i um, uh i started that with my husband uh because i am a rule breaker i don't really like following the rules i don't like doing things the way that i'm told to do them i don't like doing things the uh, the old fashioned way, the antiquated way. I think there's a lot of problems in our industry just as far as how we make films, how we make content. And, uh, you know, we're hearing a lot about that now with the IATSE strikes and, and things like that um, mm -hmm. with uh, the dysfunction of how this industry really is. This, this industry is built on dysfunction in a lot of ways. Um, and so I take a really different approach to my sets. Um, I like things to be a lot looser. Um, there's a lot of shoulds hey, well, in the first act, this is what should happen in order to propel us into the second act. And mm. that stuff to me is so unbelievably boring. Oh, um, so <laughs> Tell that I to like Steven Spielberg. I Come dare on. you. <laughs> I know, I know. So, I mean, not that I was a troublemaker in school. I think I did get sent to the principal's office a few times, but I just imagined uh, this as a, like- a few, You'd say a few times? I thought it was several, or was it uh, 10 or 20? I thought it was a few. Is it more than a few for you? <laughs> well, just a few, just a few, but they were good juicy ones when I did get in trouble. I mean, like I got detention a few times, you know, and it's usually because I was talking back, but again, abhorrent behavior. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine it's like the vice principal writing it on the, the uh, uh, report card abhorrent behavior right that's that's me <laughs> I, I i will display abhorrent behavior 100 times so <laughs> <laughs> it's it's great like because also i think it also stemmed from um the fact that the, you know making things low budget is very hard um if you don't have certain resources or favors um and i really wanted to prove that you don't need a lot of money to do really great things, to do really fun, exciting content. Uh, you just you just really need to uh, have heart and have a really good idea and have wonderful people around you and, and really great art can come from that. And you don't need, you know, $50 million. Um, of course, mm -hmm. that would be nice if someone would like to give me 50 million, please, I would love that. But <laughs> you really don't, you really don't need it. We overcomplicate these things. I like to simplify the process. Mm -hmm. and, and also, how did you uh, how did you first meet up with uh, Matt Four when it comes to uh, production uh, before that? Well, we met in an elevator, and um, we were actually on a film shoot together. And then the rest is history. We, uh, you know, he works as an independent cinematographer, and I also, you know, I have had plenty of jobs as a writer, as an actress, as a director, in other uh, ways. But this was a way for us to sort of control uh what 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 gets put out there uh we wanted to make movies that we would want to see you know um and especially now i think the movie industry i mean we're coming back after covid right but mm -hmm. it just seems like it's a lot of studio movies and they are wonderful um but it does feel like um as far as independent film is concerned uh as far as festivals and whatnot it's like you've got your big studio movies and then you've got your sundance type movies which are funded by <laughs> <laughs> sometimes studios, right so yeah uh, we, we don't need movie. to say the word or we risk getting censored so i know how that goes. <laughs> you know i mean it's like they caught the, an independent movie is 20 million dollars or less and it's like to me i'm like no <laughs> that's no if you have 20 million dollars that is that that there should be a different category for that so exactly. i kind of really <laughs> want to bring back that grassroots um independent spirit for real mm -hmm. in a real way
And, and of course, you've also won dozens of awards in the process as well, too, <laughs> that uh, you also won you know, dozens of awards, including short films, web series, music videos, and you got also two feature films in 17. You also did Happy Birthday, Ray, Hemorrhage, Key Question, and uh, tell us about those films. And if you got some yeah. more you'd like to talk about, um, feel free oh, to do so. Lovely. Oh, thank you so much. Well, um, Hemorrhage and Happy Birthday, Ray, uh, uh, they were each short films, but they also uh, were scripts. So those are my two scripts, feature scripts, that made it to the Academy Nickel uh, quarterfinals list, which um, they usually have around 10,000 submissions a year. And each year they whittle that down to about 300. Uh, wow. And then they whittle it down to about 100 and then to about five. And so uh, if you make it into, you know, that, that uh, category, I ended, uh, which is, you know, tough, tough to do. I'd been trying to do that for a while and I've made that twice now um, into the quarterfinals category. So, you know, a script of, you know, of 300 of, 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 of 10,000. Um, and, but that also ties into the abhorrent behavior thing, honestly, because, uh, again, this industry, uh, wants you to believe that these things matter. I'm not saying they don't, they do. It is really great to be on those lists. Uh, but those lists prestigious as they are, are very, um, by the book. Uh, you have, you basically read the book on how to write a really great script. Um, and you it's sort of paint by numbers and you do it that way. And then you can make these lists and that's really wonderful. I'm not diminishing that, but a script is not a movie. And that is what I have found out in the past two years, making two actual feature films myself. Um, I had to throw away, I had to throw away the book on all of that. Um, wow. and so I, I, I made a very different approach and instead, uh, you know, I know how to write a script. I've sold scripts. I love writing scripts. Um, and it's an art form. Uh, but as far as acting in my own material and directing my material at the same time, I needed a different method. Um, and I also really wanted to empower my actors because that's the thing too. Um, a script, you can't, it's not like a novel. You can't say this, what a character is feeling, what their inner thoughts are. And there's, there's reasons for that. However, as an actor, when you're trying to sell something, when you're trying to be a character, you need all the information you can get, right? Mm -hmm. And so I decided I would write outlines instead. So I would do these really, really long outlines where I would write dialogue in, allow the actors to improv as, as well if they would like to, oh, keep wow. it loose, keep it fresh. But I included pictures and references and art oh, pieces wow. so they could really feel and taste what the world looked like, you oh, know? Oh my goodness. So that, that's a very interesting approach. I've never heard of it. And you're right. <laughs> it's like, you know, everything done by the book, you got to read your line exactly, or the director is going to fire you and um, improv, mm -hmm. or look at the pictures. I love that approach. That's so amazing. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, it really, you know, it, it was kind of a crapshoot. We did the first one in the pandemic and it was a lot of actors doing Zoom calls because every, everyone was locked down. Um, and it was really more out of necessity because I just desperately wanted to tell this story, but I also knew that there was a lot more inside of me that wasn't going to necessarily come out. If I were writing it, I was going to need to experience it. And so that is what we did. And so we shot me experiencing it with these actors with a very structured outline. And that's why when you watch the movie, there are moments where you're like, oh boy, that feels a little, that feels a little real there. And it's because mm -hmm. it is. My goodness, that is yeah. something. And of course, we talked about Happy Birthday, Ray. You know, also a hemorrhage, key question. Also, too, yeah. that uh, you're also, what was it? Um, it's quarantine with Van and also Abandoned and Good Grief. And, um, you know, a little, little more as well, too. Like I said, if you want to throw some uh, more out there to talk about, feel free to do so. You are so wonderful. Yes. Yeah, so um, uh, let's see. Well, key question is actually, um, I was hired by Legendary Studios to direct that. Um, that's a series that uh, starred Marisha Ray and Matt Key, who are really big stars in the um, critical role. Uh, I don't know. I'm sure some of your listeners are critical role fans. It's a, it's a niche. It's like uh, Dungeons and Dragons, but they... Um, they are, they have millions upon millions of followers. And so it's this, it's, you enter this world where I didn't know that world, but they are beyond celebrities and um, like millions of followers. It's very exciting. And so I, it was very cool to just be able to direct that and also just to get paid to direct and to be hired <laughs> nice. to direct. And so, um, and it was really cool to get a paycheck that said legendary studios on it. You know, I mean, come on, that's awesome. 
uh, it was my first experience working with like a really large, like a larger crew. And so I felt like it was a really good learning experience and I'm really happy with, um, with what we got there. Yeah. So that was on the alpha network a couple of years ago and yeah, we've had a couple, we did, we did a web series, um, uh, it's food with Jean- uh, Vanessa Charbon and it's quarantine with Vanessa Charbon. And that oh, actually, okay. All right. I was just uh-huh. trying to read. I no, was trying to read. I should have improvised. Uh, oh my God. No, no, it's okay. Um, it's a, it's a silly character that I made up that, um, it's like a former beauty queen that just doesn't get it. Uh, maybe she's aging a little bit. Maybe she's a little past her prime, uh, <laughs> kind of a bit of a, a fame whore, uh, needs attention, has a public access show. That's how we motivate it. But the funny thing about <laughs> public access. <laughs> yeah. Oh she God, that's so eighties public. It's access. so eighties. Yes. yes. And because she got a DUI, that was what she did. That was like how she paid back the county because she comes from a really small town. So she's like a little celebrity, you know, she was Miss Arizona 2004. So she's kind of a big deal in a teeny tiny town in Arizona. So that's how she paid back the county. She gave, she gave the people a public access show. Oh my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) On life, on lifestyle things. But I learned a lot doing that. It was one of, that was uh, that using that format because um, she talks directly to camera. I, I'm, I'm Vanessa, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> she talks directly to the camera, like in a confessional style, sort of like the office. Uh-huh. But then it's like commenting on the action that's happening where it's like, oh, she's going to do an at-home spa day or she's going to bake a creme brulee or she's going to, you know, it's, it's educational, right? Uh-huh. And yes. Using that format actually is what was uh, what catapulted me into the idea uh, of doing Borrelia Borealis as a film, um, because we needed a way to motivate um, telling the story with just me because there was no one in our apartment. There was no because of the the pandemic. It was pre vaccine. No one could come over. So of course you don't want to make a 90 minute movie of just zoom calls. So there are zoom calls in the movie and they comment on things, but they're few and, you know, few and far between, not few and far between, but they, it's not the, you're not looking at a zoom screen the entire time. It's shot very cinematically. Um, And so we had a very lovely cinema camera with my cinematographer husband, and he was able to really get some beautiful gorgeous shots, uh, celestial things. Uh, it's about astral projection. Ah, um, so it's okay. like, we've got, we've got some laser light shows. I think, I mean, honestly, Mike, I think I haven't done it, but I do think it would be a fun movie to just like go. And if, if you do, you know, if you do enjoy a little edible here and there, it would be a fun movie to do that with. <laughs> oh my gosh, that'd be something. We'll talk Naughty. more about uh, Borrelia, Borrelia Borealis in just one minute, along with what's coming up. You listen to the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com, powered by Soundweb Studios. Visit online at soundquabstudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor, the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Molson's You Have Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. And check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com. We'll be back with the amazing, multi talented, Writer, actress, director, filmmaker, Catherine Easton, after this time out. We're back with the highly regarded writer, actress, director, filmmaker, Catherine Easton of Borella Borealis here on the Mike Wagner Show. And um, it's been a, a, a well-received film, by the way. And, um, you know, tell tell us more about uh, Borella Borealis. And, um, you know, it was, it was shot during the pandemic and um, mm-hmm. also um, ju- just has some issues as well, too. And, uh, you know, tell us more about that. It sounds like an amazing oh. film. Thank you so much, Mike. You're so kind and sweet. Thank you. I try. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you do. I appreciate it. Well, uh, it came about, uh, I didn't plan it. Like most things in my life, um, I feel like I'm a planner and I write and I write for years and well, we'll do this script and, you know, life happens. Um, and I was diagnosed with Lyme disease in January of 2020. Um, and then the pandemic, you know, oh, March no. of 2020 happened. Um, and it, I, it was revealed to me that I had had uh, Lyme disease for 25 years and it went undiagnosed. Yeah. And so I was really going through it just because that, you know, I had all these mysterious things that were happening and I was, I was ill. I was very ill. I had a lot of inflammation in my body, had a lot of brain fog. I was in pain. There were just so many things that weren't explained. Um, and so I was really angry and really confused, uh, just by that entire situation. And I needed to put it into something positive, which for me is always art. Art is a really great way for me to be able to express myself. And I know there's also a lot of people out there that 
have autoimmune problems. Um, even you can include long COVID with that. Now there's a lot of similarities with, with the extra things, you know, the symptoms that you have. And so I ended up, that's when I wrote the outline. Um, and I just reached out to every wonderful actor that I knew and asked if they would work for basically nothing, um, and call in. And I asked one of my very responsible friends, who's a wonderful actress, uh, Maya Reeves to play my doctor. And she's so good in this movie. People thought she was an actual doctor. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, Is that your doctor? You're real. I'm like, no, she's a wonderful actress. Like, <laughs> Yes, I do. I am a doctor. I do play one on TV. Thank you very much. I do play one on TV. And then uh, the wonderful Anthony Goes, who plays my love interest in this movie, who's just a very, very dear friend of mine. Um, he would shoot, uh, you know, at night after he put his baby to bed. I had a baby at home and, uh, you know, he's working all day. And, and then he would, you know, at night he would come in for a few hours and we would shoot our, our little lovey-dovey scenes. Um, and what I didn't realize at the time was I thought I was making a movie about uh, you know, Lyme disease and what it, you know, cause a lot of people don't understand Lyme disease. And, and uh, there's plenty of people that don't really even think it's a thing uh, or just, you know, take an antibiotic, you'll be fine. You'll be better. And it's, you know, it's, it can, it can manifest into many other things like MS, Parkinson's, it can kill you. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to just really take good care of yourself. And so, I wanted to talk a lot about that, but then it ended up sort of being de facto therapy in a way, because also here we are, we're all shut down in this pandemic. We can't really see people. We can't talk to people. And so a lot of the conversations that we would end up having that we got on camera uh, were just things that uh, were, were really important to me at the time. I was sorting through a lot of uh, past issues, trauma, which there's a huge trauma tie-in with Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. And I really think it's important that we talk about that. And I'd never seen a film like that. So I basically just let myself be the canvas, which was really scary. Um, I don't, <laughs> don't necessarily recommend it. Um, and it uh -huh. sounds so corny, um, but you're, when you're watching the movie, you're experiencing me get well and come back into my body after 25 wow. years. And, and of course, yeah. that's where astral projection comes in. Yes. And so there's this fun tie in where, you know, I was thinking, all right, in the pandemic, if you let's say you're in love with someone and you can't see them because they live across the country and you can't travel because of, you know, all the travel restrictions. How do you see people? astral projection, which is a form of meditation. And um, it's a little bit, you know, it's a little woo woo. I, I did a <laughs> lot of research into this, but you know, that feeling when you're falling asleep and you're almost asleep and then you kind of jolt out and you feel like you're falling. Mm -hmm. That is what they say is like the, the beginnings of astral projection, because huh. when you, uh, yeah. So when you fall asleep, and your conscious is sort of, you know, it's resting, your body is resting. When you're dreaming, it's said that your, your mind, your, your consciousness leaves your body and huh. goes and plays in other astral realms. And that's what dreaming is. This is and, and if you meditate, this is something you can achieve. Now, I have tried this. And I have not achieved that, but I do know what it's like to dream. I know what dreams are like, mm -hmm. um, fantastical dreams. And so that's what I was trying to sort of create too, because we shot this movie in a one bedroom apartment oh, wow. and you wouldn't know it. We decorated every single wall differently and we shot every single crevice you could think of this little corner, that little corner. But because we have this device of uh, going to the astral realm to see the person that you love, uh, it sort of becomes a bit like a laser light show disco dance party with just beautiful lights and it's rainbows. And it's just, I, my, my husband is a very, very talented cinematographer and knows what he's doing with lighting. And so when uh, we, we premiered it at LA Live a couple of weeks ago at the La Femme Film Festival, and I was really worried to see it all up on the, the big screen because I was like, oh no, my little Zoom movie, was this going to translate? And it was just so much fun. <laughs> it did, you know, so and that's wow. a testament to my husband, the, the wonderful cinematographer, so. Oh my gosh, that's so amazing. You talked about uh, earlier when you're dreaming, all of a sudden you wake up. I seem to have these dreams where I have something like that. It feels like it fell like, you know, three, five, seven, ten 10 stories. You wake up, it's like, oh my gosh, yeah. you think you're falling. And I think to myself, Jolt. either something's about to happen or you had too much pizza. It's one of the two. So. It's one of the two. It's serious. It's usually, yeah, it could be both, honestly, Mike. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I've had happen before too. So word to the wise, never eat pizza before you go to bed. And you yeah. don't, don't have to have those dreams. So <laughs> exactly. No. Yeah. Highly recommend. <laughs> okay. And of, and of course, uh, where can we find uh, Borrelia Borealis at? Well, we got a distribution deal and it is being distributed through Freestyle Media. And we are going to be released on January 18th. Nice. So just in a couple of months. And so it'll be on all, it'll be on VOD uh, streaming platforms. And so do a little Roku search, a little Apple search. It'll pop up and you'll be able to rent it or, or buy it. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm really proud of it. And I really, um, I stand by it. And I'm really excited to be able to show it to people because we also have a lot of really fun music in there. And it's just, uh, I think it's a testament to um, independent filmmaking in general. Uh, and I, I hope that, I hope that, young people can watch it and be inspired and say, okay, all you need maybe is a thousand bucks and a toothpick and a, and a Q-tip and some scotch tape and you can do it. You can do it. That's all you need. MacGyver it. <laughs> yeah, MacGyver it. I was just going to say it. That was my favorite movies. I actually picked up some of that stuff. And I think um, they said a thing about gum explained all these uh, ingredients and that's what's used to do this, do that. Never mm-hmm. use it. You know, for that's like, I feel like I was going to science class and here he is. Yeah. Ex hockey player. It's like, what does he know about it? And it's like, I give credit to him and uh, I use it to, um, for all kinds of things. I mean, who needs to go to a hardware store? You can use just chewing gum. Just gum. Yeah, you can hold. Yeah, absolutely. Like, that's my, uh, just how I look at life is just MacGyver it. Just MacGyver it. You'll be fine. <laughs> there you go. And of course, you know, speaking of um, your, your movie, Borrelia Borealis as well, too. And uh, where else can we find your other movies like Happy Birthday, Ray, Hammers, Key Ooh. Questions? And where can we find all your other works at? <laughs> Well, so a key question should be up on YouTube. Uh, that was originally on the Alpha Network, but the Alpha Network is no more. So I believe it's up on YouTube. Um, and the others are short films. Those are not features. So the short films um, are on Vimeo, on YouTube. You can find them. Um, they're, you know, <laughs> they're good little pieces to, you know, we talk about like the origins of filmmakers, like interesting to watch to see where we started and where we're at now. You know, it, it takes a while. It does. It takes a long time, but Okay. I feel, yeah. All right, sounds very good. Well, check those out. We're here with uh, Catherine Easton of Borella Borealis here on the Mike Widener Show, the very talented, highly regarded, award-winning writer, actress, director, and filmmaker as well, too. And um, just a few more minutes here. We'd love to have you back in 2022 20, uh, and beyond. And uh, you also have, you also just wrapped up uh, another feature yes. as well, too. And tell us more about that. Because I lost my mind and thought, you know, while I'm trying to sell my first movie, I'll make another one. <laughs> but I had to. Mm -hmm. Uh, so Valley Heart is about it's totally different from Borrelia it uses a lot of the same cast members and some really wonderful new cast members Um, but it's about my experience in Los Angeles um, as as an actress Um, I really am obsessed with the movie Chinatown uh, which is a Roman Polanski movie yes yeah what a classic yeah it's so good and they touch on the history of Los Angeles and how corrupt it is. And it really is. And then, you know, arguably a lot of America is corrupt, but Los Angeles in particular is sort of a, a city that is built on a lot of broken promises and a lot of um, just, just lies and crime. And um, there's a lot of people that live in that city and there's a lot of dreams that live in that city. And I think, my experience uh, with it has been more in particular in the Valley. Um, And in the past year or so um, I was assaulted twice. I was mugged, nearly mugged twice. Oh no. Um, No, it's okay. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, you live, you learn, but um, I had sort of, it made me start contemplating the things I had given up on the way to the dream. Right. Like, and how Los Angeles changes your brain fundamentally. When you leave Los Angeles after you've lived here for a while, you feel weird. You don't feel like you really belong anywhere else. You go and you can enjoy places, but the way that this city sort of messes with your brain and the way that, you know, Hollywood uh, is, is really insidious and really frightening. And so I was sort of looking around my neighborhood going like, man, like, this is, I don't know. There's some shanty towns here now. We got like a lot of tents and, you know, we have, uh, uh, maybe some criminal activity going on. Uh, that's very obvious. Um, and I just was just fascinated by it. And so I wanted to really write about, you know, what have the last 10 years really, what have I learned in the past 10 years? I've technically lived in Los Angeles about 13 years. Mm -hmm. You, you, you win things, you lose 
lose things, you have love, you lose love. Um, and it's all, it's all in this pursuit of, of this dream of being in the movies and everyone's got a story. And so I, that's where it sort of started for me. And so it's a crime thriller, uh, it's loosely based on a few, a few things I've maybe, maybe have or have not experienced or witnessed, <laughs> uh, <laughs> possibly in my own apartment building, you know, again, I live in the Valley, a lot happens there. Um, and so I was, this time we had a little bit more of a budget. And so we were able to fly out some of our favorite actors and, uh, it was a much more structured script, but oh, I wow. still allowed for improv. And, um, it is very like to live and die in LA Chinatown, um, like you said, all the president's men, that is the vibe. Mm, that is Paranoid. amazing. So looking forward to it. And when can we expect uh, Valley Heart to come out? Oh, I hope uh, at some point next year, we are in the middle of post-production right now, but we're already talking to distribution companies and we are pushing for a theatrical run because it is a theatrical film and it deserves a big screen. Oh, it sounds like it too. I can't wait. And uh, what else can you expect from in 2022 and beyond besides Valley? Well, this is so exciting. Thank you for asking. Um, I'm currently working um, on an elevated horror film right now called Sacred Feminine. Um, uh, I say elevated horror because it's not like a slasher movie. It's not, you know, it's not Friday the 13th. <laughs> Although I love <laughs> Freddy, those movies. Freddy. I love those movies. But, Freddy. Uh, <laughs> I'm setting out to make something a little more, you know, along the lines of, you know, Midsommar, you know, or, or the shine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> more Here's like that. Johnny. Exactly. A little more, you know, existential horror, slow burn. That's what I love. Mm -hmm. And that's the stuff that I think is really scary. And that is about feminine power. Mike, it's about feminine power and how much of it we have and how much of it we don't use. Huh? That's rather interesting. We're so looking mm -hmm. forward to it. And, uh, who do you, you consider, who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Oh, the biggest influence in my career. Wow. That is a really, really interesting question. Um, hmm, hmm. I would have to say, uh, oh, this is gonna, I've got a couple. Can I name a couple? You sure can. You can do a few, you can do several. How many you like? Okay, I have to say my dad, even though he had nothing to do with the film industry at all, uh, <laughs> but his, his uh, he never gave up on what he wanted to do. He was a professor at Syracuse University. Uh, he worked, he's the hardest worker on the planet and gave me my work ethic and to not accept no as an answer when someone says, you know, when someone shuts a door in your face. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like I learned a lot just by way of like my grit and my like, you know, my inability to be like, all right, no, we're, we're going to keep, we're gonna keep going. <laughs> this may, we may be down, but we're not out, right? Because uh, you got to have that kind of spirit out here. Um, and as far as, uh, as, as far as like my heroes are concerned, I, you know, I do love me a, a multi hyphenate. So, you know, the Ben Affleck's of the world, the Matt Damon's of the world, um, Jennifer Westfeld who directed kissing Jessica Stein. Um, it's, it's people like that, that are able to say, all right, yeah, I'm writing this. I directed it. I'm acting in it. They want to say that's impossible. It's not. It's not. And I think it's in many ways gives you a, a more singular voice uh, when telling a story, which I think is can be very interesting. That is very interesting. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Anybody who's pursuing film filmmaking? It can be anything in general. Anything in general. <laughs> uh, do no harm, but take no shit. I like that. <laughs> Straight to the point. I love it. <laughs> and I'm going to apply to that. <laughs> it's a good, it's a good credo. <laughs> and I know what to do with the shit they say. So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's very impressive. We're here with the uh, highly regarded and amazing multi-talented writer, actress, director, filmmaker, Catherine Easton and her uh, latest release, uh, Borrelia Borealis here on the Mike Wagner show. Catherine, very big. Thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again mm -hmm. soon and make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Looking forward to having you on again. And once again, tell us about your upcoming projects, what's your website, how do people contact you, where can people purchase or check out your works? Yay. Thank you so much. Well, you can find me on IMDb under Catherine Isabella Easton. My Instagram handle is at Catherine Isabel, and I'm going to spell it because I have a really weird spelling. It's at K-A-T-H-R-Y-N-E-I-S-A-B-E. L L E. Yes. I have lots of long names <laughs> going on with everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, Borrelia Borealis will be out January, uh, 18th on VOD streaming platforms.
We certainly will check it out. Once again, Catherine, we're very big. Thank you for your time. You've been totally amazing. Looking forward to having you again soon. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Looking forward to having you on next year. And um, we wish you all the best. You've got a great future ahead of you. Oh, thank you so much, friend. I really appreciate it.